Hey, it's Coach LB. I'm back with some more Timberborn. And uh, as you can see, we are done building all of these. Uh, let's put potatoes. We're going to change this one to potatoes also. So you might be wondering what I'm doing. Hey coach, what, what are you doing now? Well, what I'm doing is I am getting prepped for those floodgates when we get the ability to use them, which means I'm gonna need a path up there. Let's see. And They're almost done with this second area. So the other thing is that having another dam over here means that fields here, fields in this area will uh, also stay wet through a drought as long, provided there's water there. As the water evaporates in this section after it's filled during a drought, if I put enough water from our lock system here through this, it'll overflow from here into the next one. And you can use that to measure out how much water you actually will need at times. Okay. You're now at 24 beavers. We still have a beaver without a job, so we'll just put him with the builder's hut for now. Oh, and now we are getting to that point where our water production is not enough to keep up with our population. which can also be extremely detrimental to the survival of your beaver population. So now you can see that they're gathering dandelions. And dandelions are used for medicine. So one of the cool things is it seems a little bit of a micromanagement thing, but the fact is you can change. When you change what's in your warehouses, it'll automatically shift the goods from one to another where there's open space oh did I change oh yeah that was the other one that was I put to empty that I demolished so now the dandelions that they are gathering will be stored somewhere and like I said dandelions are used to create medicine and medicine helps to heal up your beavers faster when they're injured okay i'm going to put another path 
here going that way. Ooh, another drought coming. And we should be good. Hopefully, with this whole water thing. I have a specific storage system I like to use. It was designed by actually the devs in uh, one of the Timberborn updates. I can't remember. I think it was update three that they showed it off. And it's actually a very specific to the folktales design. And I liked it. I loved it so much that I use it constantly. I think I'm going to build it behind our Forester. So I am going to start putting that in place. And if you notice, it starts off looking exactly like <laughs> what I was building up there. I was going to keep it up here, but as I started thinking about it, I was like, this is, it's gonna create issues, space issues uh, over time because I'm not gonna have it where I want to. So let's just make this a little bit, alter our planning a little bit. And so I'm going to set these to empty because it's faster to just empty them. I mean, I realize that if I destroy them, it'll just be extra, but. here and this pile is going to be all planks all right our drought starting almost two full small tanks of water which is going to be great we finished this dam over here so this will retain some water for a little while uh, we're almost at 500 which is great the only other thing I'm going to need actually as I was saying the only thing uh, other thing I'm gonna need is I'm actually gonna need double and triple platforms as well because you might be thinking well you have single platforms but the cost for per platform so if I was to use uh, three single platforms instead of a triple platform it's gonna be six logs and 12 planks versus six logs and four planks it's the plank cost that makes using double and triple platforms uh, actually way more feasible than just stacking up single platforms. So normally I would make fields like seven by seven because of beehives and actually beehives, which are unique to the folktales, help to fertilize everything. Uh, the only issue I see with that right now at this moment is that the bee stings they bring down your wellness uh, so 
it sometimes becomes difficult to actually gauge whether you want to have them because yes it helps fertilize crops much faster but in the same respects it also create can create problems so it's one of those you play it by ear you can always remove uh, beehives later on but it also depends on the size of your beaver colony and I think it is the time to start working on some interesting and fun things for our beavers. Well being. And I've just picked up a rooftop terrace and you might be asking yourself, what is a rooftop terrace? And what is this gonna do for our beavers? What is, why is this a thing? Well, rooftop terraces are another uh, way for your beavers to relax and wellness, and it will increase our wellness level. And that's what we're going for. So I will start working on that. And this is also going to be another layer for our beavers where they're going to live. So there's also that. Okay, we got that 500. So I'm going to go ahead and landscaping and get our triple floodgate. And I'm going to put where our floodgates are going to need to be. We'll do four of them there. Do levees there. Levees there. And the thing is to build them because they can't cross uh, and they can't go across these floodgates we'll actually have to build a way to get across from behind this so there's two options for that i can build platforms and build a walkway or i can build suspension bridges which are a lot of science, but right now it might be a little bit better to build the platforms and build bridges later. Okay, we've got our potato fields. And I am going to let our potatoes grow, our potato stash grow a little bit. Because once I get the grill, man, they start cooking potatoes fast. That's in the wrong spot. I hate it when I do that. You're probably wondering why is it such a big deal if it's in the wrong spot? Well, since this is a very well thought of and laid out pattern, if it's in the wrong spot, it creates problems later. Okay, we this it's going to be for gears when we start making those but for right now I'm actually going to put more logs in these 
because our logs are filling up quickly. Then we need single platforms there. And another storage this way. And for the time being, that's going to have more logs in it as well. Because our logs are actually growing faster than we are so which is good I mean it's great to have a large selection of resources well I was not expecting that overflow like that oh the water physics on this game sometimes Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to put another levy there and another levy there. And see what happens. Because this water, all the water physics on this game. <laughs> Okay, that seems to have fixed that issue. Yeah. Oh, got enough for our triple platforms. And as we have seen, uh, we definitely are going to need some levees over here. To keep this water from getting away from us on that side. But once this is done, we've got our we've taken our first step to uh, having a sustainable reservoir for water. Now you might be wondering, you're like, "Hey, coach, well, why didn't you just, you know, create a reservoir over here and then move your water, uh, your water gathering over to here?" Well, that's something for a later date. Oh, we got all the trees over here. Well, since all the trees are gone, let me get rid of this lumberjack one and this lumberjack one. It seems our plank production is slowing down just a little bit. Because, yeah, planks are one thing that you have to keep up with. So we are going to... start setting up on mass for some power oh it's barely getting enough all right we'll turn that power wheel back on Here we go, more lumberjacks over here. Why? Because. We don't need a reason other than, yeah, you need more lumberjacks. Let's up the, we'll up the priority on these lumberjacks. And we will probably carry it to the next drought and then call it because 
this episode is starting to run a little bit longer than uh, I planned. But I will say, once we get our main infrastructure done and we're doing certain things, this is probably going to turn into a lot more cuts in the series as time needs to progress for us to grow. But right now, I'm just wanting to really let you get the feel of how how long or how short it takes to get certain things going. So... Uh, as you can see, is this, yep, that's for logs. So now we are into the next area. So now I'm actually just going to quickly mirror what I did on the other side. I know we're not gonna get enough planks to fill that up right now, but. gonna start so then well what was I thinking of oh I got lost for a second <laughs> I was like, what am I looking for? I had a little bit of a brain uh, mal malfunction there. Okay, so these, for the time being, are gonna be planks. And for the time being, this is actually gonna be more logs. Okay, we haven't hit another drought yet, but I think we're going to end it here because this episode is starting to run long. So, uh, yeah, I think we're we're moving along. We're chugging. Um, I'm going to start building up our colony a little bit faster after we get this done and try and uh, flesh out this district a little bit more, especially in the housing area and some other things. But... I'd say we're off to a really, really promising start, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Later.